In the mailbag today, we have a question about Cobb Douglas production function. And this person says, my textbook's telling me that A equals 0.3 and B equals 0.7. So this is the exponent on labor, the exponent on capital is 0.7. And that if they use 30 laborers and 70 units of capital, the amount of output is 109. And then they tell him to solve for the constant. So if we look at this Cobb-Douglas function right here, Q equals C times L to the A times K to the 1 minus A, they're asking him to solve for C. Just plug in 30 for L, 70 for K, and 0.3 is the exponent on labor, and 0.7 is the exponent on capital. Solve for C. And this viewer asks, what's the point? Good question. Let's talk about this a little more. Now the general way that we would normally write a Cobb-Douglas production function is this. The amount of output, Q, is some constant times the amount of labor raised to the A times the amount of capital raised to the B. And in general, A and B can be any number, normally positive, and it's important that we don't restrict A and B in general for a Cobb-Douglas production function. Now, with a utility function, it is pretty common to see utility functions restricted in the way that we see here. u equals x to the a times y to the 1 minus a. And that's okay for utility. I'll link to my video on that down below in the description if you want to know why this is always okay when it comes to utility. But it's going to be rarely okay to restrict this general function here to this kind of restriction where the exponents have to sum to one, that's going to be rarely something that makes sense if you're talking about a production function. Now why the big difference? Well, the big difference here is that utility is just an imaginary concept. It's the amount of happiness you get and there's no real way to measure that. The whole point with utility is that a larger number means that someone is happier. But when we're talking about a production function, this Q, that's amount of output. That's a real thing. We can't fake that. We can't mess with it and pretend that it's just some kind of made up idea. How many units of output are coming off the end of the production line is a real thing. If you write the production function where the exponents have to sum to one, that is only okay if you're assuming that you have constant returns to scale. Constant returns to scale means that if you double the amount of inputs, both inputs, you double the amount of output. If you multiply the inputs by five, you multiply the output by exactly five. No more, no less. That's kind of restrictive. And in the real world, yeah, it happens, but you don't want to restrict it unless you know that's the case. So in this case, we are assuming that this is true, apparently, according to this textbook for this one problem. So what is the point here? Well, point number one is, if we're trying to study some kind of industry, we want to understand what the production function looks like. It tells us a whole lot about how this industry works and their choices. Second, we want to understand, is the Cobb-Douglas a good way to represent this production function? The Cobb-Douglas is just one of an infinite variety of possibilities that we might see in an in industry for a production function. So maybe the data fits it, maybe it isn't. So if we think the Cobb-Douglas might be a good fit, then what we want to do is figure out what are those exponents and what is the constant that we need to use. What we'd like to do in this kind of situation is go out and collect some data on this industry on in different periods of time, how many workers are they using, how much capital are they using, and how much output, and just go collect a lot of data. The more the better. In this kind of case, I'd say bare minimum, you know, 10 or 15 observations, but ideally hundreds of observations for a firm on this. And then we could use linear regression and a linear regression can help us figure out what those constants and slopes are. If you want a video on that, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. So in particular, in this example, though, what we're assuming is that, number one, the marginal rate of technical substitution is 0.3L over 0.7K. Just using that shortcut rule, again, I'll link to the video in the description about that. So for an industry, we might know this is true. 
that the ability to substitute between labor and capital is given by this ratio, 0.3L over 0.7K. Secondly, we're assuming, as I said before, this firm has constant returns to scale. And it all depends on those exponents. So if you're assuming that those exponents add to 1, so if A and B add to 1, that's constant returns to scale. If they add to more than 1, that's increasing returns to scale. Less than 1, diminishing returns to scale. We must be assuming we know that. And then also we're assuming that we observe this firm, plug in 30 and 70, and they get 109 units of output. Therefore, what's C? So all we're doing here is just a little math problem. It's not all that interesting. Right? So I'm just, I'm just telling you, this is, this is not rocket science. This is really a math problem just to see if you understand the mathematics behind this. That's the long story short here. So 109 equals C times 30 to the point 0.3 times 70 to the point 0.7. And they just want us to solve that. So if we plug in 30 to the point 0.3, multiply that times 70 to the point 0.7, we get 54 point to 9 roughly so 109 equals 54.29 times C divide both sides by that 54.29 and we'll cancel on that side and we get that that constant is going to be roughly 2 right roughly 2 a little bit different a little bit bigger than 2 and so that's really the whole point of this problem I just want you to know a lot of the assumptions that are built into this kind of problem but in the end I think this textbook wants you to just kind of understand how to work with the math in order to figure out what this function would look like and that's it so if you have any other comments or questions or anything that I didn't cover in this or any of those other details I mentioned that you'd like me to explore in another video let me know I'll be happy to do it other than that I'm done guys Good luck with all of your studies.